Sure. Yes, I'm a um, general practitioner in England and I mm -hmm. uh, have type 1 diabetes. Right. And I've had type 1 now for 27 years. Mm. Um, and for the last seven years, I've been on a ketogenic lifestyle, so very low carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And that has revolutionized my life. My life. All right. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, we're just walking away from our dinner. <clears throat> Thomas Wimes here. Um, so I'm here with my um, new friend Ian Lake, um, who I've met for the first time at this conference. We had, you know, previously emailed, and um, so we're at the Keto Life Conference um, in Switzerland. Oops. It's got a um, thank you. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> and um, I was thinking we could talk some. Type 1 diabetes. Excellent, <laughs> that's my subject. Thomas. Yes, perfect. <laughs> and uh, we could maybe sit down somewhere. So we're here in this beautiful giant hotel. Maybe if you look around, you know, staircase and all. It's right now pretty empty. Um, yeah, so, um, so Ian is an expert in Type 1. And uh, maybe we'll just sit somewhere here. Put my wine glass down. All right. <clears throat> and... Um, so, Ian, so you're a doctor? Yes, I'm a um, general practitioner in England and I mm -hmm. uh, have type 1 diabetes. Right. And I've had type 1 now for 27 years. Mm. Um, and for the last seven years, I've been on a ketogenic lifestyle, so very low carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And that has revolutionized my life, yeah. really, which is why I'm here at the Keto Life mm. Conference. Good. Well, now you gave all the punch flats away already. Good. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, to recap, um, so you're a doctor, you probably treat people with type 1 diabetes, um, I'm yeah. assuming some. In the UK, I'm a general practitioner, so right. most type 1s are treated within a secondary care setting with consultant diabetologists right. and, and specialized nurses. Okay. But we get enough people with type 1 passing through. Right. right. And because of my knowledge of a keto diet, I, mm. I'm considered a right. reasonable specialist within general practice right. for keto diets. Right. Yeah, and of course you have type 1 diabetes, so yeah. you actually know what you're talking about. Right? Yes, and you I do treat indeed. someone with yeah. type 1. I do, yeah. Right. Um, and what I find, so I, I'm always puzzled <laughs> about type 1, um, because my understanding, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a, I'm a doctor, I'm not a medical doctor. Yeah. So my understanding is that the typical treatment for type 1 is, or the typical advice is, Oh, don't worry about your carbohydrates so much, you know, eat whatever you want, as long as you take the right amount of insulin, you know, to balance it out, live your life, um, and don't care about it. Um, okay, knowing a little bit of, about physiology and how this all actually works, right, so um, someone with type 1 of obviously has no insulin, right, and the body yeah. doesn't produce any insulin. And what insulin does, of course, is um, it reacts to um, blood sugar rising and pushing it back down, right? So yeah. if the blood sugar never rises, you don't, theoretically, you don't really need insulin, right? yeah. at least not as, almost none, right? So what I would think, you know, if I were a, an alien being beamed down to this world, um, and trying to figure out what to do with someone who has type 1 diabetes, I would say, oh, obviously, you don't give this person any carbs. Um, yeah. Seems totally normal and obvious, but yeah. that's not the advice. No, the current um, advice is that you have a, a, a normal diet mm -hmm. and you manage your insulin around carbohydrates. The only There's no specified amount of carbohydrates for type 1. Some charities would say... There's no lower limit or upper limit of carbohydrates. Mm. But in practice, most people are encouraged, I think that's probably the right word, to, to have the conventional diet of healthy whole grains, uh, carbohydrates, around 50% of your intake, uh, healthy fats, fairly low fat, a normal protein, cutting mm. out refined sugar. And then the idea is that you have uh, an estimation of the amount of carbohydrates per meal, and then you inject the right amount of insulin to suit what you've estimated the carbohydrates to be. Uh, and in theory, uh, when you inject insulin, the timing for insulin should coincide with the peak of your carbohydrate mm -hmm. um, absorption to the bloodstream of glucose. 
and then you should be able to normalize your glucose levels to between mm -hmm. sort of physiological levels between four and six. And I heard a lot of shoulds. <laughs> it should yeah. work. Like it that, should right? work. So that's the theory. In, right, in theory. And, right. and I mm. think what happened was that when mm -hmm. insulin pens were invented in the 19, early, very early 1980s, yeah. I think what happened was the life of a, someone with type 1 before that, it was mixed insulins and it was very difficult for them to um, have what I'd call a normal life or a spontaneous life mm -hmm. because if you injected a mixed insulin it meant that you had to anticipate um, the uh, onset of action of your of, of your second insulin if mm -hmm. you like, which is longish acting insulin so you were always eating around hypos really or trying to avoid hypos mm -hmm. and then when pens came along it happened to coincide with the the low fat diet and the high carbohydrate diet mm -hmm. and of course pens gave you that flexibility to eat when you like in theory mm -hmm. and inject insulin um, according to the amount of carbs you have mm. the problem with that is it's almost impossible for some of us and the vast majority of us to actually balance the carbs of the insulin so yeah. most people's glucose surges up or down and you rarely get it in the middle of the normal right. range right yeah so the recommended range for someone with type 1 um, is um, seven percent uh, which is 48 millimoles per mole in European mm -hmm. um, the normal range is six percent uh, for someone who doesn't have diabetes but unfortunately in the UK 70 percent of people with type 1 have an HbA1c of seven and a half percent or above mm -hmm. 70 percent 70 percent wow. that so. hasn't changed mm -hmm. with pumps uh, compared yeah. with pens mm -hmm. it hasn't changed with artificial pancreases mm -hmm. materially it's gone down a few a few points but not enough to make a difference oh. and at that level uh, if you have an HbA1c above 7.5 percent which 70 percent of people in, in England and mm -hmm. Wales do you lose 100 days of life every right. year right. according to the European uh, Association okay. of uh, Diabetes. Maybe just to recap um, so yeah. that was fast um, uh, so what Ian was saying is um, yes in theory a patient with type 1 diabetes can juggle their blood sugar level by just you know just injecting just the right amount of insulin at just the right amount of time and just um, being very um, highly educated about it all and extremely disciplined and having all the tools available and you know measuring maybe their blood sugar mm -hmm. frequently and if you do all this completely perfectly you're fine okay case closed like most people <clears throat> um, they're not perfect um, and they have a really hard time controlling the blood sugar. And 70% um, have high enough blood sugar on average that their the marker A1C is just elevated, um, which um, costs you life, um, you yep. know, years of your life. So in, pra in theory, it all works. In practice, it actually doesn't. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, one would think <clears throat> a logical solution should be, okay, let's not even add the carbs um, mm. that you know your body can't really deal with um, mm. it's just not not deal with, even mm. with it um, to begin with um, which is not what happens um, but um, oh, there's a solution of course um, which is just not to add those carbs uh, and that comes down to a ketogenic diet mm. um, which is a very very low carbohydrate high fat diet um, which is you know what he has been implementing for himself and for his patients I'm assuming yeah. Yeah. Um, and probably most doctors, um, conventional doctors, if a patient comes, type 1 patient comes to them and says, hey, I want to do a keto diet, they would freak out yeah. and start yelling <laughs> at the patient mm -hmm. and start um, saying, hey, you're going to kill yourself, um, I'm not going to support you. But in reality, it works, right? It's absolutely spectacular. I remember mm -hmm. from day one of trying the keto diet, I got perfect loose coats control. Mm -hmm. And that sort of drove me on to carry on. Right. Um, luckily for people with type 1 diabetes, carbohydrates are the, are the only macronutrient compared with fats and proteins which are not necessary as part of the diet. So carbohydrates provide energy, but they do not provide any other nutrient value. Yes, within brown wheat, brown flour, etc., there, there are nutrients and, and, and fiber etc mm -hmm. but there's nothing in carbohydrates that can't be accessed from other other macronutrients so it's lucky for people with type 1 that carbohydrates are dispensable mm -hmm. um, so and it's also 
fortunate to some degree that carbohydrates are the main driver of high blood glucose. Mm -hmm. and, and if you have high blood glucose, you need insulin. So if you cut down your carbohydrates, clearly you don't need to take much insulin yeah. because carbohydrates are the biggest driver of, of high yes. glucose. There are other drivers of high yeah. glucose, protein to some degree, fat to a minor degree, mm -hmm. and also other whole stress hormones can raise glucose and insulin mm -hmm. is required to bring it down. But by far the biggest driver is carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. So if you cut your carbohydrates, you need less insulin, you get smaller errors. Mm -hmm. So it has been shown that people who have type one diabetes on a keto diet have up to six times fewer hypos, have near normal glucose control mm -hmm. throughout the right. throughout the day. Hypos means hypoglycemia. Hypo is hypoglycemia, right. which means Where? you have to take sugar. Exactly. You, you feel a bit strange, you mm -hmm. possibly have spots in front of your vision. You certainly feel urgent, you're at risk of blacking out, mm -hmm. and you need glucose to rescue that. Right. That's not an uncommon um, thing. Mm -hmm. It happens to minor degrees in most of us, several days of the week probably. Right. But not to the degree where you need help. It's just minor irritant, really. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with a keto diet, it reduces hypo sixfold. Right. It normalizes blood glucose, and, and um, it's a fantastic way right. of uh, going on. Okay. Also, hypos, you know, hypoglycemic episodes yeah. are a cause of death potentially, yeah. right? So you can die from that. Yeah. Um, if you reduce the risk for that by <clears throat> going on a ketogenic diet, then it seems pretty logical yeah. to me to do that. Yeah. Um, but what do you think is the reason why it's not common practice? Is there actually a reason for that? I, I think that we've all been brought up to fear fat. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole of my life as a doctor, you know, 30 odd years of being a doctor, we've been brought up to think that fat is a, um, a cause of heart disease. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you cut carbohydrates from your diet, you have to replace it with something else. So you naturally would replace it with a higher fat diet. Mm -hmm. There are healthy fats, um, but I think most doctors believe uh, that fat is a, a cause of heart disease. And certainly there is an association between high cholesterol levels, which are driven by animal fats, if you like, and heart disease. But um, it's not absolutely proven that uh, saturated fat, mm -hmm. which is present in animal fats, is a cause of heart disease anymore. Um, and one of the biggest drivers of, of fat production, strangely, in type 1 diabetes is carbohydrates. Because if you're eating more carbohydrates than your body needs, it converts them mm -hmm. under the influence of insulin sure. into fat. Right. So I think it's unnecessary to be frightened of fat. Mm. And as I've talked, as I talked before, when you, mm -hmm. you lose 100 days of life if you don't have very good glucose control, mm. you have to balance that with the tiny advantage you get by reducing right. fat from your diet. Yeah. I so would it's think a balance, a risk management thing. Right, yeah. You know, type 1 diabetes used to be a deadly disease yeah. um, not too long ago, and it is still, you know, a very dangerous disease. Um, I would actually think, you know, the the danger, if it even exists, of high fat um, doing anything bad to you is the least of your problem. <laughs> if you have type 1 diabetes, you have other things to worry about. Um, yeah, so what... But I still don't understand. I mean, it rationally makes no sense right? to just say, hey, maybe fat might kill you 50 years down the road, which it doesn't. Um, and to tell that to a type 1 diabetic, just, I mean, rationally makes no sense. It's a, well, I guess we will never figure out right now why it is still yeah. the case. Um, as a, do we need studies that prove this better? I mean, is yeah. there... I, th I think there are no long-term studies on the beneficial mm -hmm. effects of ketogenic diets because none have been done, and I mm -hmm. don't th think that any are underway. Mm -hmm. But of the studies that have been done on low-carb diets, it has shown that the long-term measure of glucose control is much improved. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also the day-to-day -day variation of glucose is much improved, so people get near mm -hmm. normal glucose levels. For example, for the past seven years, I've never been in the diabetic range for my long-term glucose mm -hmm. control, mm -hmm. which for me is remarkable, because before that I was way out of control, mm -hmm. and I was trying hard, and everybody said, oh, you're a doctor, you must know how to control diabetes. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I do, but I found it pra in practice very, very difficult. And of mm -hmm. course, if you, if you don't have a what I call an even energy lifestyle. So if you're doing a bit of cycling, doing a bit of running, uh, doing a bit of sedentary life, um, it's difficult to balance your carbohydrate intake and your, your insulin intake with your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So unless you have an absolutely regular lifestyle, mm -hmm. it makes it even more difficult to control. Yeah. So for me, it's easy. 
um, it's logical, it follows the science, and the, the fact that carbohydrates are unnecessary um, is lucky for people with type 1 diabetes. Mm. I've halved my insulin volumes, and I can only think in the long term that's going to be good, mm. because if you continually inject high volumes of insulin, you put yourself at risk of type 2 diabetes on top of type 1 diabetes, mm. and, and in and, and in that situation, mm. you are at increased risk of heart disease, you're increased risk of obesity, mm. and you're increased risk of continual high blood glucose, which, as you know, damages your kidneys, and it damages mm. your retinas, and it damages your blood vessels, mm. generally. So for me, it's a very good way of managing diabetes, mm -hmm. and I'm trying actively to, to promote it, because right. it makes complete sense. I think it's outdated. I think we need a new paradigm of care, mm -hmm. and that paradigm of care doesn't right. hasn't become part mm -hmm. of the consciousness of people who manage diabetes yeah. yet. Yeah, interesting. Of course, the demand is always there for, you know, show me the randomized yes. control yes. clinical yes. study yes. published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Yes. And a study like this costs, you know, millions and mm. mil tens of millions of dollars, maybe even more. Um, who would pay for it, right? So um, obviously nobody, um, <laughs> because a ketogenic diet uh, makes nobody rich. Mm. Um, so nobody has an incentive to invest in that. Um, well, of course, there's a public incentive, you know, um, health insurance is, you know, yeah. well, they might save a ton of money if yeah. they have to pay less for insulin and they have fewer sick people, you know, developing chronic kidney disease. Um, um, I'm not quite sure how we would get to those folks and say, hey, let's fund this study once and for all and start treating um, type 1 different. Yeah. Um, I guess we just have to spread the word. Uh, maybe somebody, if you're out there, <laughs> you work for a health insurance company or for Medicare, um, pay attention. Um, if you want to save money, um, do a study or ask Ian to do one for you. Mm. Fund his um, work. Um, that might be a solution, maybe. All right, um, but I think other than that, um, you know, spreading the word even on, you know, on the internet um, with credible sources, um, I think is a way to go slowly. I, th I think people are slowly getting it, mm -hmm. and certainly the people that do find it, mostly by accident, are mm -hmm. very grateful that they found it. And people with type one, as I say, you get control literally from day one, and it's such a spectacular mm -hmm. change in your fortune. Mm. But most people get actually quite irritated that they weren't given this information yeah. before. Yeah. So I've written a couple of courses on um, how to manage ketogenic lifestyles for mm. type 1, aimed at healthcare professionals, so at least they won't, not let, they won't hinder their patients from, mm. from, from, from moving on. Because right. at the moment, 50% at least of healthcare professionals actively discourage their patients mm. from going into a keto lifestyle, mm -hmm. and all of nearly all of the uh, reasons why are completely invalid and unscientific. Yeah, right. So it, it doesn't make any sense to discourage people from mm -hmm. going into a ketogenic right. lifestyle. So I'm very keen to promote that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, good. But well, Ian is a very polite man from <laughs> in, you know the UK. Um, <laughs> I'm maybe less polite as a German. <laughs> I would almost call it medical malpractice to um, you know keep treating type 1 diabetes the way people have been doing it um, all right quote me on that sue me <laughs> um, but um, all right where can people get help um, so they can uh, you said you have a course um, available for practitioners so yeah. let's say there's a patient out there where can they send their practitioner to well that there there are that, that my website is www.type1 which is the number one type one keto.com mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, patients themselves can get in excuse me <coughs> Patients themselves can get enough information to um, start a keto lifestyle should they choose mm. to do so. Mm -hmm. But it's also helpful to have the support of your healthcare practitioner right. um, because they are the ones that sort of monitor your, your insulin. If you're on extra drugs or if you have complications, mm -hmm. you'll need expert help. Right. So I always uh, advise people to, to take advice from a healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. But if the healthcare professional is actively discouraging you, that makes mm. it, it pro provides quite a dilemma right. for right. the poor patient. Right. So I've produced on my website, there are courses now for healthcare professionals of all grades. Okay. So they will Excellent. be able to understand the rationale for keto, mm -hmm. understand how to help people who have already got complications, right. and just sort of know what 
if you're a type one that has gone keto, mm -hmm. understand you, hmm. <laughs> and which is great help, right? Because you know we we, we all take um, you know our healthcare professionals are studied for a long period of time to help us, hmm. and you know we, we like it really as type ones when healthcare professionals are on our side, mm -hmm. if you see what I mean. Right. And when we know we're doing well with a keto diet, mm -hmm. and our healthcare professional doesn't appear to be on our side, it's quite irritating. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if the reasons they have for not being on our side aren't valid. Right. So that will help everyone, I think, to, to get on the same page mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we'll move people with type 1 into the normal range. Mm -hmm. In the long term, we'll reduce complications. In the short term, we'll reduce acute complications such as hypoglycemic attacks, low blood sugars. And of course, that will benefit everyone because you know, if you're driving and have a hypo, it's quite a, quite a compromising situation. You have to stop your car, you have to get in the opposite seat, so you can take the keys out of the ignition, etc. Mm. And you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes of your driving has, has to be stopped, mm. so you can, mm -hmm. you can restart, and of course the danger to the public is immense. So a keto lifestyle will, will help in so many respects, and it, mm -hmm. it, it is so freeing. I mean, I can go all day without eating, mm -hmm. and that was unknown seven years ago for me. Mm -hmm. So I can have, a, I can almost forget my diabetes as someone with diabetes, hmm. which is a remarkable thing to happen. And, and you know, I'm so privileged to have, have actually accidentally bumped into a keto hmm. lifestyle. Right. But it suits me enormously, and I'm, I'm hmm. quite keen that mm -hmm. at least every type one knows that it's out there. Right. If they choose to do it, that's entirely up to them. But hmm. I think if you lived your life, had complications, and didn't know, I think that's such a sad thing, really. And I'm mm -hmm. quite keen that everyone at least has the information available to them. Wonderful. Because it's transformative for your right. life. Okay, amazing. Um, so, all right, so healthcare professionals can get um, information on Ian's website. Um, are you on social media as well? Yeah, somewhere? I've got a Twitter, at ID Lake. Okay, yeah. I'll try to link all this yeah, down there. Yeah, thank you. It's a fairly small right. website. Really. Okay, yeah, but um, get in touch. Um, tell your healthcare professional to um, check out um, Ian's website. Um, and you know there's always well in the u.s i would say there's a choice of healthcare um, practitioners that, that may not be as easy in the uk of course um as i understand but um you know um you can make choices um probably um great well thank you so much Ian. Um, thank you it's very enjoyable yeah. just one last thing to say yes. if you're a healthcare professional and you happen mm -hmm. to be watching this it is such a rewarding experience for you as a healthcare professional to watch your patients transform in such mm -hmm. a short space of time. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, I'd strongly encourage at least you, you know about keto because you'll get such immense job satisfaction from this. Perfect, wonderful, yeah. And yeah. that's kind of what this meeting that we're at is kind of all about, um, actually education, uh, educating doctors, dietitians and so on, um, providing those resources on the you know, somewhat pioneering, radical ideas um, that, that are out there, but that actually work. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Very enjoyable.